Lockdown brought about a slowdown of human activity such as the modern world has never known. Become unnecessary, many lights were turned off in towns, suburbs and even in the country. The darkness that came about revealed the value of a complete black night for wild nature, even if in some places this was already known. In Israel, hares took up love fighting. And in Australia, there were no holds barred. On the empty beaches, as in the towns, wildlife returned. In Brazil, during the 2020 lockdown, hundreds of baby green turtles were born on the beaches that were usually crowded and lit at night. In Thailand, 11 leatherback turtle nests were found on a beach where they had stopped coming because of tourists. In Indonesia, India and Turkey, a record number of hatchings were recorded on beaches forbidden because of lockdown. This hadn't been seen for over 20 years. Once very abundant on Reunion Island, turtles practically disappeared during the last century because of fishing and the urbanization of the coastline. None of the animals came anymore to lay their eggs. So the arrival of a green turtle is always a great moment. Gabby is one of the returning residents. She waits for night to wander the beach. She comes because this is the only beach on this part of the coastline which is completely dark, because before we started the restoration program for the egg-laying beaches, it had been at least 60 years since there had been eggs laid at saint Leur. She needs darkness, a very dark beach, and there aren't many beaches with no public lighting. This is practically the only one on this part of the coast. Landscaping and revegetating the beaches of Reunion Island is the holy grail of Stefan Ciccioni, oceanologist and director of Kelonia, a turtle protection center. This vegetation will allow the turtles to recognize the beaches which are good for egg laying. And they will create a screen as well to limit and protect against light pollution from the human constructions behind the beach. The beach in 89, before we started the program, there was nothing on the beach, just some casuarina trees. And then here in 2018, the vegetation is already well developed. Plantations have to be made with precaution, as the turtles have a special relationship with beach vegetation. The smell of the plants is a reference for them to identify the sandy beaches which are best for egg laying. To reduce light pollution, LED lights only light the beach car park. On the seaside, a deflector stops the light and leaves the sandbank in darkness. Gabby has dug a 70 centimeter deep hole and she lays a hundred eggs in it, fills up the hole and leaves the beach.
There are only two turtles which lay eggs on Reunion Island, Gabby at St. Leu and Emma at St. Paul. So it's really an extremely fragile situation. Protecting the nests is important because it's thanks to those nests that the population can regenerate, even if that takes 20 or 30 years. Emma comes in turn to lay her eggs before taking to the ocean for several years. Marine turtles go back to the sea relying upon their vision, the white foam, the light upon the water of the moon or of the starry sky, make the sea the most luminous horizon. Artificial lighting disorients them. While the adults can still find their way, this isn't the same for the newborn, who have no experience and limited strength. Each year, thousands of them around the world, attracted by distracting lights, become lost and die of exhaustion. If we want to help the reproduction of marine turtles on Reunion Island, there absolutely have to be beaches suitable for egg laying, and so to limit artificial lighting and human occupation of the beaches at night, as it was possible during lockdown. Lockdown shone a light, as you might say, on the necessity to preserve what remains of the world's darkness. Migrating birds are particularly sensitive and clearly more affected by strong lights. Two-thirds of them migrate at night. They take paths that are well indicated by the lights of the moon and the stars. On Reunion Island, from April on, the year's young petrels play out the destiny of their species. These seabirds, born on the rocky heights of the island and which have never flown, throw themselves out into the emptiness to find the ocean. Usually, urban lights and especially stadium lights attract them. They land far from water and remain on the ground, completely lost. Light blinded and stuck to the ground, these superb ocean birds are at the mercy of roaming dogs. The main reproduction site of petrels are the steep cliffs of Grand Bernard, one of the highest summits of Reunion Island, touching the sky at 2,900 meters of altitude. Six hours walk is needed for scientists that monitor the colonies to reach the nesting zone. COVID-19 stopped any such mission for many months and researchers are worried that predators will have decimated the young population. Ah, petrol's body. Yes, it's a chick. That's typical predation. Only the wings remain and all the flesh is gone. The nests are hidden in holes in the rocks and only a practiced eye can spot them. Yes, you can see the feathers there. I'd say that's a chick. Oh yes, you can see it. Burrow 137, one chick. This three-month-old young chick is larger than an adult because its parents have fattened it to be able to face a sea voyage of over three years. After 
five years' absence, it will return to its birthplace to reproduce. It will pick a partner to whom it will be faithful for all of its life. The couple choose a hole and make their nest. The species, of which remain only a few thousand couples, is still not well known. It is known that the female only lays a single egg each season, which makes the descendants extremely vulnerable. To understand the behavior of this species in danger of extinction and essentially nocturnal, researchers use infrared cameras. A daring rat benefits from the absence of the parents to steal an egg. Here we're at an altitude of 2,600 meters, and it's from here that the young petrels take flight to make their first migration. They leave in the dark of night, directing themselves by the light of the stars and the moon on the ocean, which they have straight before them. And from that, it's easy to understand that the lights of the town can distract them from their path. To save the species and to make the departure of the young easier, Reunion Island began, over a decade ago, an operation to fight against light pollution called Nights Without Lights. Turning off most of the powerful projectors which light up sports grounds for nighttime training has saved a large number of birds. But despite the reduction in lighting, volunteers of the Ornithology Studies Society of Reunion Island still save each year between 2,600 and 3,600 individuals. Because of their long wings and their palmed feet, it's impossible for them to take off from flat ground. Despite nights without light, we still see that there are birds which fail, but with lockdown a lot less because the sports grounds, stadiums and other lights are turned off, and so we suppose that there are less birds that fail. In any case, we get a lot less reports. When they hit the ground, the young petrels often break a wing, which is the first thing the volunteers check for. A recovery centre has been created to look after them for the time it takes them to heal. The powerful, pointed wings of these long-distance travellers are fragile. Here, they are cared for, watered and fed. Once they've been fixed up, they are released and their long voyage can finally begin. <laughs> 